Hi everyone. This video is going to be about translating everyday statements into categorical form propositions. Uh, I will not be doing any of the starred problems as those are, uh, the answers to those are in the book itself. Well, let's look at number two. Temporary workers are not eligible for fringe benefits. Here we are talking about all of the temporary workers who exist in this world or whatever it might be. Temporary workers are not eligible for fringe benefits. So remember our categorical propositions are all SRP, A form, no SRP, E form, some SRP, I form, some SR not P, uh, uh, O form. So we need to translate this into one of those forms. So because we're talking about all of the temporary workers, we, say, we will say all temporary workers are not eligible for fringe benefits. So not eligible for fringe benefits is not an appropriate predicate class because it doesn't have a noun. So we need to add a noun. And one way to do that is just whenever you're talking about humans to just say people. So all temporary workers are people who are not eligible for fringe benefits. So if we write that out, all temporary workers are people who are not eligible for fringe benefits. And that is an A form statement. Number three, terrorist, terrorist attacks succeed whenever security measures are lax. So we're talking about all terrorist attacks and we're talking about times that security measures are lax. Remember, this is the, let's see, um, adverbs and prop, uh, pronouns section. So this is uh, 262, section four. Remember that whenever, whoever, wherever, um, any of those words, the thing that comes after that is the subject class. So really we can say whenever security measures are lax, terrorist attacks succeed. So what we say is, um, and notice there isn't a, a, a noun class, so all times that, let me just look again. So whatever comes after the whenever is our subject all times when security measures are lax, all times when security measures are lax, are times when terrorist acts are successful. All times when security measures are lax are times when terrorist acts are successful. That's an A form proposition. Or you could say, are times the terrorist acts succeed? Not all guilty feelings are psychological aberrations. Number five, not all, or sorry, not all guilt feelings are psychological aberrations. So when we're saying not all, remember our four statements, all, no, some, and some are not. When we say not all, we're not saying none, we're saying some. So um, some guilt feelings are psychological aberrations. Number five, not all guilt feelings are psychological aberrations. So some guilt feelings are psychological aberrations. Now let's look at that again though. Not all guilt feelings are psychological aberrations. So I am wrong here. It's not that some guilt feelings are psychological aberrations, not all are psychological aber aberrations. That means some guilt feelings are not psychological aberrations. Some guilt feelings are not. So if not all of them are, it means that some are not. Every jazz fan admires Duke Ellington every single one of them, right? So what type of uh, proposition do you think this is? Pause it, think about it, write it out. If you said A form, all SRP, you are correct. Every jazz fan admires Duke Ellington. All jazz fans admire Duke Ellington. Now, is this correct? 
No, it is not. It is not in categorical form. Think about why that is the case. The reason why it's not in categorical form is because admire Duke Ellington is not an appropriate class. There are no nouns in this class. All jazz fans admire Duke Ellington. So all jazz fans, and remember what I said earlier, are people, whenever you're talking about humans, you can just say are people or are not people, depending on what type of proposition you're, you're using here. So all jazz fans are people who admire Duke Ellington. A television show that depicts violence incites violence. A television show that depicts violence incites violence. So even though it's saying a television show, the author here is trying to fool you. Um, you might think, oh, that's one television, one television show. Um, sorry, was I putting the wrong, the emphasis on the wrong syllable? Um, <clears throat> A to, when we say a television show that does this, what we're saying is all television shows that do this do that. So a television show that depicts violence incites violence. All, and I'll just shorten this, all TV shows that depict violence incite violence. All right, that's correct, right? No, it's not. Don't fall into this trap. Students always fall into it. They forget that they both classes need to have noun groups. All TV shows that depict violence are TV shows that incite violence. We need to include that noun group within our predicate class. And I don't mind if you just use the same subject and noun groups. That's an easy way to think about it. Uh, it might not be the most subtle or grammatically uh, correct or harmonious, but that doesn't matter um, because we're in the realm of logic and all we care about is the meaning of the terms. All TV shows that depict violence are TV shows that incite violence. Manipulators do not make good marriage partners. Manipulators do not make good marriage partners. All right, so um, is, the, is this sentence saying that it's some, all, or none? Is it all manipulators do not make good marriage partners? Is it no manipulators make good, mar good marriage partners? Some manipulators make, do not make good, or some do not not make good. If you chose E form, you are correct. No manipulators. This is saying that no manipulator makes a good marriage partner. I'm gonna mess it up on purpose again. No manipulators make good marriage partners. What have I done wrong here? I'm halfway there. Right, make good marriage partners does not have a noun class. So what have I told you when you're talking about humans? Use people. No manipulators are people who make good marriage partners. And by the way, when you're talking about humans, you use the word who, not that. So you wouldn't say no manipulators are people that make good marriage partners. You use that when you're talking about non-human entities. So when you talk about humans, no manipulators are people who make good marriage partners. Just on a side note. All right, let's uh, move forward a little bit um, to some that are a little bit different. If an activity emits methane, then it contributes to climate change. If an activity emits methane, then it contributes to climate change. Remember, this is, as you know, uh, a conditional statement, an if-then statement, if A, then B. When you have an if-then statement, when you want to put it into categorical form, A, E, I, or O, um, the first part um, of the conditional statement will be the subject, and the second part will, uh, will be the predicate. 
So if an activity emits methane, then it contributes to climate change. What this is saying is that all activities that emit methane, right, are things that uh, contribute to climate change. So all activities that emit methane are activities or are things or processes, whatever you want to say, are things that uh, contribute to climate change. If something is an activity that emits methane, then it's something that contributes to climate change. It's the same as saying all activities that emit methane are things that contribute to climate change. No shellfish except oysters make pearls. No shellfish except oysters make pearls. No shellfish except oysters make pearls. Okay, what is this statement saying in categorical form? No shellfish except oysters make pearls. If you look in the book, uh, section eight, there's an example here with peacocks. No shellfish except oysters make pearls is the same as saying all shellfish that make oysters, or sorry, all, <laughs> whoops, all shellfish that make pearls are oysters. Now, why isn't it all shellfish that our oysters make pearls. This is the other option that probably most of you would have fallen into. These are the two things that most people would say. Let's look back at it again. No shellfish except oysters make pearls. The correct answer is all shellfish that make oysters, or sorry, excuse me, all shellfish that make pearls are oysters. This is saying that the only types of shellfish that make pearls are oysters, but it's not saying that all oysters make pearls because there are some oysters that don't make pearls. There are other oysters who could make pearls but don't. There are other oysters that could make pearls but they're not in the right environment, so they don't. And you'll see here that all shell, what this statement is saying is that every single oyster is a thing that makes a pearl but that is not the meaning of the original statement. And actually that is not true because we know that there are oysters that exist that don't make pearls. It's only a few, right? Which is why they cut through so many to find those pearls. Um, so the answer is all shellfish that make pearls are oysters. So this is, if it does make a pearl, it's gotta be an oyster, but it doesn't guarantee, being an oyster does not guarantee making pearls. All right, let's do a couple more. The Kentucky Derby is never run in January. This is a tricky one. It's always tricky when you're talking about a single thing, right? Like a single race, like the Kentucky Derby, a horse race, single uh, person, Justin Harrison, a single um, dog, instead of talking about dogs in general. So the Kentucky Derby is never run in January. All oh, right, the Kentucky Derby is never run in January. So whenever there's a single, a th not always, but usually when there's a single entity, you would say all races identical to the Kentucky Derby all races identical to the Kentucky Derby are races that are never run in January. All races identical to the Kentucky Derby are races that are never run in January. Anytime you have a single entity, so I'm talking about myself, Justin likes cupcakes. I do like cupcakes, they're delicious. Um, you might think like, oh, some people like Justin are people who like cupcakes or um, all people Justin are like cupcakes, but that doesn't make sense, right? So whenever you're, like if we're talking about me and I like cupcakes, you would say all people 
identical to Justin are people who like cupcakes. Or if you wanted to, you could say are philosophers who like cupcakes. Um, or you could call me whatever you want. If you don't like my class, you, could, you might think in your head, are jerks who like cupcakes. And if you actually said that on the test, I would still give you credit because it's technically correct. I'll, well, I, I hope it's not technically correct that I'm a jerk, but um, at least you used a subject or you used a noun class, um, a noun in your uh, predicate class. So hopefully you don't think I'm a jerk, but anyway, just using that as an example to show that you can, how to approach uh, individual, um, very specific entities. All right, let's do uh, one more. Let's do one with unless. Unless is a word that often gives people uh, some trouble. Lunar eclipses do not occur unless the moon is full. All right. Um, whoops. Okay. Lunar eclipses do not occur unless the moon is full. Lunar eclipses do not occur unless the moon is full. So in the book, um, this is a, a difficult one, but uh, in the book it says, think of um, the word unless as if not. So if we take what the book says, lunar eclipses do not occur if the moon is not full. Lunar eclipses do not occur if the moon is not full. And then what the book does is it says all times the moon is not full are times when lunar eclipses do not occur. All right. Oh, I added the word when, so that's fine. Yeah, so that's the... Um, the way the book handles it. Um, but what about this? Um, all times uh, lunar eclipses occur are times when the moon is full. Is that correct too? It is. And for those of you who are more savvy and, and have done a little bit more work in terms of understanding, why are these terms equivalent, or are these uh, propositions equivalent? Correct, because they are contrapositives. So if we took the contrapositive of this statement, flip it, and change it to the, um, the non-inclusive class, you would say, all non-times when lunar eclipses do not occur are non-times the moon is not full. It, that's really clunky, right? But what, essentially what you're doing is creating a double neg negative. So uh, to put it into everyday language, if you flip it, get rid of the negatives, then you have all times lunar eclipses occur are times when the moon is full. And we know that if it's an A-form statement, contrapositive is logically equivalent. So if I gave you a question like this, um, uh, I would accept both of those answers as being correct. And let's just have some fun with this. Um, um, all times lunar eclipses occur are times when the moon is full. We know that the obverse is always logically equivalent. So to get the obverse here, no times lunar eclipses occur are non-times when the moon is full, but what we could say is are times when the moon is not full or are non-times when the moon is full. No times lunar eclipses occur are times when the moon is not full. That is the obverse of this statement. And so technically, any three of these um, would count uh, as uh, uh, 
a categorical statement that would align with the meaning of the original everyday language statement. All right, uh, I hope that uh, you all found that helpful and um, I wish you well as you continue your journey in intellectual development in the realm, the beautiful realm of logic.